Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 1112 of the Juice Box Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to the Grand Round series with myself and Jenny Smith. You know, sometimes I just think everybody knows Jenny, so I forget to introduce her properly. But Jennifer Smith has lived with type 1 diabetes since she was a child. She has firsthand knowledge of the day to day events that affect diabetes management. Jenny holds a bachelor's degree in human nutrition and biology from the University of Wisconsin. She's a registered and licensed dietitian, a certified diabetes educator, and a certified trainer on most makes and models of insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitoring systems. She is also all over this podcast, from the Pro Tip series to Defining Diabetes to Ask Scott and Jenny. I also call her a friend, and I think she's one of the smartest people I know about managing type 1 diabetes. You can hire Jenny at integrateddiabetes.com. Please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. Don't forget to save 40% off of your entire order at CozyEarth.com. All you have to do is use the offer code JUICEBOX at checkout. That's JUICEBOX at checkout to save 40% at CozyEarth.com. This episode of the Juice Box Podcast is sponsored by AG1. Drink AG1.com slash juice box. When you use my link and place your first order, you're going to get a welcome kit, a year's supply of vitamin D, and five free travel packs. This episode of the Juice Box Podcast is sponsored by US Med. USMed.com slash juice box or call 888-721-1514. US Med is where my daughter gets her diabetes supplies from, and you could too. Use the link or number to get your free benefits check and get started today with US Med. Today, we're going to talk about food. Uh, to just briefly go over, so far we've gone over hospitals, diagnosis, insulin and safety, today food. Should be a, a, a slightly shorter episode, although I expect you to go off on some sort of a tangent at some point. So maybe <laughs> it'll take a little longer. The reason I thought that you'd have a lot to say about this is because obviously your background in nutrition. So yes. we have a few pieces of feedback from listeners about what they prefer, what they would have preferred to hear from doctors. We'll go through a little bit of that. We'll talk about it from a couple different perspectives and we'll, uh, we'll let people get back to their lives. I really like the feedback from people especially in this because i think i think it offers a lot of perspective of knowing now what people know and what would have been really helpful yeah. and i think food is a big place i mean it's one of the three things that helps manage diabetes yeah. so i agree i think for this episode for these episodes specifically having someone go through it not knowing what they should want or need and then having them live long enough to think back and go, oh, you know what would have really helped back then? And then sending in that information is great. Right. This person says, I wish I would have known in the initial phase with MDI that my toddler can have up to five grams of uncovered carbs for a snack. I came home from the hospital terrified to feed him anything but meat and cheese. So wow. Th <laughs> so this is this is interesting, isn't it? Because. A new diagnosis may assume some honeymooning and yes, but, but telling somebody they don't need to bolus for anything under over under five carbs is really giving, it's really setting up the quiet expectation that we think you're going to get low or we're okay with you being higher. One or the other, right? Correct. That's, I mean, it's a good assumption. Yes. But it also creates a lot more confusion. Right. Right. Because I guarantee that nobody said that as long as it's under five grams of carb, you don't have to bolus for it. They didn't go on to say, but if you add up multiple things that are under five grams and you eat them all at once, then you need to bolus yeah. because See, the complete total is well more than five grams. And, and is, I guarantee that wasn't clarified. Right, right. That's an assumption the doctor will make like, oh, they, they'll understand that I don't mean, you know, if you have five grams at two o'clock and then five grams at two thirty and et cetera. But there's no reason to think anybody would understand that. Correct. None. Yeah. Right. A and it sets up long term problems because now in their mind forever and ever, anything under five carbs doesn't it doesn't need insulin. 
and then they see a high blood sugar, I bet you they don't even put two and two together at that point. And they wonder, unless they're paying enough attention to and have a continuous monitor that they've really tried to pay attention to some yeah, trends or things that are, you know, happening over and over again in those early days or weeks. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just a good example of if you, you can outsmart yourself. So if you over, I'm not saying every doctor does this, but w- we know it happens. You over basil somebody because you don't believe that they're going to count their carbs correctly or bolus on time or whatever you, whatever you're imagining isn't going to happen. And then you give them this piece on top of that. They now have two, I mean, two things that are going to send them down the wrong path and create confusion for the rest of their lives. Right. And some clarification there, too. I mean, a lot of this is if you're just clear up front with some simple pieces Mm -hmm. about insulin, about food, about the variables, and even just a couple of the variables, especially for little kids, the explanation of, well, we might tell you right now, because sensitivity for your three-year-old child is going to be high. That maybe they can get away with a couple of grams of carb to nibble in between, you know, toddlers. I mean, they they grab something or they want something. I mean, they don't just sit down to a big meal three times a day. Right. So, you know, it brings in the idea that, well, if they want one cracker and it's two grams, they could have that and you don't have to worry about having to give insulin for it. But then again, the understanding that that's going to change. Right now, they might not need insulin. They might be going through honeymoon, but eventually that five grams is neat. It needs to be counted. Mm. Well, the other thing here, I mean, no disrespect to the person who was kind enough to send in the the question or the statement, but they now have a misgiving. They do. Like she she now thinks, like, listen to the words. I wish I would have been told that my toddler can have up to five grams of uncovered carbs. That's not true. Like, like, it's it, not. yeah, it might be true in that situation. Maybe the kid's honeymooning, but you need all the context of that. But now moving forward, this is how she speaks about he or she speaks about it when when she says it out right. loud. She's got a misgiving. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm just assuming moms are the ones listening to this podcast. Not that guys there can't be involved. There are plenty of dads, too. Uh, yes. There are a lot of dads. I know. Uh, it's funny. Like, I'm a dad and I just assume there's no dads listening. But um <laughs> But she's got this misgiving. And now when she goes out in the public, she's spreading it because she's telling us, like, you need to let people know your kids can have five carbs without covering it. <laughs> like, OK, like, like so right. now here we are, we're spinning down a rabbit hole and nobody's ever going to get back out of it. Again. And someone that may read it and knows better already at this point from what they've seen and dealt with thus far can absolutely say, well, that's not the case and may chime back in and say, well, you know, especially, you know, with your group, they're really great about kind of going off each other. Yeah, I know. They're fantastic at helping each other. However, why did I set this up to tell you this one first? Because here's the next one. This is fantastic. Even three grams of a snack, like a small cheese puff package, we have to cover that. <laughs> Even within days after diagnosis, we found out real quickly there's no such thing as a free snack. There you go. Absolutely. So the next person, to com- you know. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And it it just it justifies the the idea that individualization of the information that you give, which is really hard at initial diagnosis. Mm-hmm. You can't get to know somebody in that tiny amount of time where you're trying to give them some save yourself or save your child kind of information. Because that's really what it is at initial diagnosis, yeah. right? They're setting you up to get you going, to get you out the door, to get you home, and then to be able to connect with somebody that can give you the broader scope of, right. let's call it the correct information. Hopefully. Right? Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. Right. Hopefully you'll find a next person who will go a little deeper with you. But again, a lot of this epi- a lot of these episodes to me are about what happens when you say these kind of just offhanded things in the first days or weeks. And you leave people like like the one person figured it out and the other person didn't figure it out. And they're both listening to this podcast. So even that didn't help completely. No. This person says, I'd like my doctor to know that my son doesn't need to be on a low calorie diet to achieve a great A1C. Mm. So somebody was told to limit calories for A1C. That's where you said, you know, you'll wait for me to go off on a tangent. Yeah. This might be my tangent. Go. go honestly. Ahead. No, please do. <laughs> 
because depending on what facility you get diagnosed at, and I'm I'm speaking more toward the kid and teenage kind of facility, right? Because nobody anymore really pays attention to nutrition needs of a growing child or a growing teen. And I said nobody, that's not 100% correct. But less and less I see that parents have an understanding when I get to work with somebody finally and my question comes up, well, what parameters were were you given for portions, Right. right? Because just because you can eat food and cover it with insulin doesn't mean you need three packages of something, right? right? And so initially, that's something that should be set up sooner than later is the concept of containment of of portion. Yeah, And it's not. It's a lot of just centered around carbohydrate thinking, Mm -hmm. centered around how to count the carbohydrates with no idea that somebody needs this much or the 13 year old needs this much. And the 18 year old who plays, you know, field hockey five days a week needs this much. There is a major variance, Mm -hmm. but no, just cover your carbohydrates, whatever you're choosing to eat. I don't know that this would come to a shock to anybody, but Jenny and I talk privately a fair (laughs) fair amount. Yes, I think that what I saw in my life is the way I grew up in the beginning they tried. Here's some chicken. Here's some beans. Like have a salad. Blah blah blah. And the minute we pushed back as kids, they were like, "Ah, screw it." And then when <laughs> money got tight, it all went to like processed, prepackaged. And you can probably—I don't know the dates, but I think in my childhood lifetime, you can look back to where processed foods became more and more prevalent. And, probably. And they were cheaper, and they were more convenient. And then uh, my parents went to that before you knew it, like, you know, you weren't making something from scratch anymore. You were making it from a package or a box. How amazing is this? Look, you right. just dump this into water and add meat. I'm like, okay. You, you, know, you know, and like, right. and I want to say I've never liked hamburger helper. I will not eat it. But that is what, um, but that is the thing that somebody was like, here, look, dinner, it's got meat in it. Like, you, you Absolutely. know, like, yeah. And so when that's all going on and your body gets rewired, to just like, I don't know, to crave those things. That that's tough then, because now these portion control problems are insane. And I only have perspective about it 40 years later because I'm taking a GLP one and my brain works differently now, right? Right. Kelly and I were out last Saturday. It's Friday now. Last Saturday we were out and we got this, like we saw this chocolate cupcake. It was like chocolate cake with chocolate icing. And it was big. It was like four around, around and we were like, we can split this. Sure. And three goddamn days later, we couldn't eat the damn thing. Like we were like taking a forkful out of it and being like, oh, that was good. That's enough. And putting it down. But if if I'm not on this GLP, we probably would have like fought each other with the forks to get to the rest of the cupcake that we would have been gone in a couple of minutes. Correct. And so now you're giving this stuff to your kids. They're like, woo, let's go. Like, And it's not them. It's their, it's their wiring. It's their, you know, it's the... I, I hate to sound like a yeah. hippie, but it's the way it kind of restructures your gut to want these like carbs and uh, all the stuff that goes with it. And Absolutely. So, sugar, yeah. sugar. I, there is, there is something to be said about sugar addiction. Mm-hmm. It's a real thing. hundred yeah. percent it is. And so again, if I were to go off on a tangent, it's, it's definitely about the fact of today's life is busy. It's even busier than when these processed packaged all convenience, you know, you brought up hang- hamburger helper. And the reason it was there was because, whoa, we've got these dehydrated like peas mixed in with noodles that you just have to pop in. And oh, then your ground beef, all you have to do is mix it together and you've got a complete meal. Yeah. You've got minutes. everything that you need within 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. But, so but that's not, not good for you. <laughs> it's, it's just right. not, it's not good. And I think that more and more we are eating food that is not it's not fueling us. It's not actually providing nutrition. And and I'm not against saying that I think people are having other issues that are probably nutrition based that we're not even aware of at this point. Correct. Yeah. Arden has been getting her diabetes supplies from US Med for three years. You can as well. USmed.com slash juice box or call 888 721 1514. My thanks to US Med for sponsoring this episode and for being longtime sponsors of the Juice Box Podcast. There are links in the show notes and links at juiceboxpodcast.com to US Med and all of the sponsors.
<laughs> Absolutely. But I think it compounds it then when, you know, early in diagnosis, you've not been given the information about what your body actually needs, even on a caloric level. And by no means do I ever really recommend anybody count calories. Mm -hmm. It's tedious. It's, it's just not purposeful, but understanding portions are visible. Your child needs this many portions of this in a day. Your child needs this many portions of this, making sure to emphasize that these foods should be real food. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So those are the words rattling in my head while you're talking. Uh, I, you know, you do this long enough and you, you know, you know what you're going to say next sometimes. And while you're speaking right there, I, I thought when she stops, I'm going to say real food. That's yeah. exactly what I was just thinking. It, it, so portions important, right? You can't just, you don't want to be taking in tens of thousands of calories when that's not what you need to get by. You are going to have an issue with your weight if you do that. Um, but also you're going to end up using more insulin that then right. very well may cause lows later that'll cause you to need to eat again to like bring it back up. But the problem we're, we're trying to figure out here is what should doctors be saying to people to a not because you don't want the people to hear, oh, yeah, OK, I'll, I'll have four ounces of chicken and a salad and three beans and I'll never drink soda again. Like because if the doctor leads with that, the people who don't want to hear that are going to be like, nah, never mind and not listen to that. The people who already eat that way are like, yeah, cool. That's what we eat anyway. No big deal. Right. I really think that you should lead with real food, reasonable portions. I think that's Correct. enough to get people going, right? Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think within that, too, the understanding that I think a lot of, I know that a lot of parents also feel like all of a sudden there are these restrictions that are going to be in their child's life. And so they try to make up for these restrictions very early on by not restricting in one of the places that there should be restrictions. <laughs> I understand it, by the way. I'm not, I, I'm not, yeah. even, I would never come down, but I know you don't want there to be like these grand changes to, to your lifestyle. But I, I think it is worth mulling over privately. We were on a bad path. It just got shown to us earlier because of the diagnosis. This path was going to lead you to a bad place eventually, but your body probably would have hammered through it for 10 or 15 years. And then you might have got a couple medications that got you a little farther. And then somebody would have been said, take a proton pump inhibitor if you've got, uh, you know, right. reflux. And and maybe you would have got through it until finally one day in your 50s, you would have been like, I can't, I, the medicine's not helping. I can't fight through this anymore. I've got pre Maybe I'm working up on some type two diabetes, you know, or all the other things that could come mobility and problems like that. You're just finding out earlier. So mm -hmm. there's a way to think about that as a bonus. I know that's a weird thing, but you can say like, you know, I or my kid was diagnosed. At least now I know this food is like, I think diabetes is just shining a light on the fact that you're eating things that aren't beneficial for you sometimes. And yes, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? No, it does. Absolutely. I've, I've said that and thought that many times myself. I mean, if I wasn't diagnosed when I was with type one, I'm sure my career path would have been different. Mm -hmm. And would I have wanted to focus as much on overall like human health? I don't know. I originally wanted to be a veterinarian, yeah. so I don't know where that leaves nutrition information, right? But I'm very, I'm very happy for many reasons that I had to learn as much as I did. Right. And obviously where that led and how I can help people mm -hmm. and everything. But I think that many people who live with some type of health condition, that lifestyle impact, yeah. you can start to learn a lot more about yourself and what what makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And I mean, fortunate or unfortunate, diabetes, it sure shows you a lot about the impact of food. Yeah. And I mean, and we've talked about this before, but it's worth bringing up some luck for you, right? Your mom was a person who grew food. She cooked. She took it seriously when the doctor told her this was what's up. You didn't push back terribly. Like, like there's a lot that went your way. Um, right. But my point is, is that, OK, some people aren't going to have that. That's not going to be their trajectory. It doesn't mean you shouldn't tell them. Correct. They still deserve to know because maybe something will happen later in the future and they'll just like get smacked in the head and think, oh, that's what they meant. 
And, yes. you know, maybe I could be doing that. Maybe not. Fair enough. Like, we're not going to save everybody. And I understand all that. But as the doctor, I think it's incumbent upon you to tell them the truth without scaring them or making it sound like you're stealing something from them. And Correct. that's not going to be easy to do. But again, from my perspective, listening to you, listening to other people, if you just preach real food at a reasonable amount, I think that's most of it, really. You know, right. cook, cook your food. You should be able to look at it and see what it is and actually go, that's chicken. I know what that is. That's chicken. Right. You know, you look at hamburger helper and you go, oh, that's noodles and peas. I'm like, is it? <laughs> Keep reading. You know, there's more in there. Like, you ever notice you don't flip the chicken over and it doesn't say chemicals? It's a chicken. And even now, like, people are smart enough to know, like, look, organic might be better because, or no antibiotics that have been used or grass fed for some reasons. Like, these are all reasonable ways to avoid pesticides and chemicals and things that, you know, again, I, I feel like I'm going to, I feel like I sound like Joni Mitchell's, like, like <laughs> guru right here or something, which is just a, reference That's nobody's going to get at this point but like these things are going to change the microbiome in your gut and you're going to end up one day with a headache or an achy joint and you're going to think oh my wrist is hurt and somehow it's going to be that those billions of little things living in your stomach have gotten messed up by something somebody sprayed on something I partnered with AG1 because I needed a daily foundational nutritional supplement that supported my whole body health I continue to drink AG1 every day because it works for me. AG1 is my foundational nutritional supplement. It gives me comprehensive nutrition and it supports my whole body health. Drink AG1.com slash juice box. When you use my link to place your first order, here's what you're going to get. A free welcome kit that includes a shaker, scoop, and canister. Five free travel packs. A free year supply of vitamin D. And of course, your AG1. So if you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash juice box. That's drinkag1.com slash juice box. Check it out. You know, as I'm thinking about this and where is the introduction to food started, it started at diagnosis and majority of people with type one or younger people diagnosed with type one in a hospital setting are admitted, mm -hmm. right? What's your introduction to food it's and what <laughs> is possible to eat now that you have this new diagnosis that you're learning, well, food has an impact on this. And now I have to pay attention to something called blood sugar or blood glucose. And we have to do these finger sticks and what the number pops up like what is that? I mean, all of these thoughts are circulating around. And then what comes in three times a day is the food from the cafeteria. Yeah. I know hospital food. I worked in a hospital cafeteria was when I was in college. And it's it's not it's garbage. Yeah, yeah. No, it's terrible. <laughs> and it's not good for you. And the and by the way, the diabetic menu is ridiculous. It just it just limits you from choosing from like one portion of the menu. It's you could still get apple juice if you wanted to. <laughs> And, you know, like we live in a world now where you can walk outside and ask anybody, hey, do you think you should drink fruit juice? And most people would go, no, I've heard that's not a good idea. Right. The hospital hasn't heard. <laughs> like, come on, it didn't get to them. And then you realize the hospital's a private company. It's not, you know what I mean? It's they're trying to make money, too, and et cetera. Correct. So. Absolutely. But, you know, I've 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 had parents who've come to me and said, well, you know, as we talk about this, like the processed components and how to make things a little bit, you know, better overall. And, you know, I've heard it a couple of times. Well, my child likes pancakes and this is always happening. Okay, these are some alternatives. These are some ideas to still keep that in the picture. But they ate pancakes in the hospital. That's what they served them after they were diagnosed. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, If you're a physician, maybe a good place to start is to go back to your, the board of directors or however you report things and say, look, I don't know how you expect me to put these people on a good path if this is the garbage we're sending into their room as we're diagnosing them. You know, how am I supposed to stand there and go real food, reasonable portions while they're eating pretend food? <laughs> so under a, right. like a, a dome that makes everything moist. Has anyone yes. been, not been in the hospital oh. ever? Where you're like, oh, I don't, I'm hungry, but uh, you handled it. I don't want this now. Thank I you. I know. When we, they, they actually looked at us like we had four heads when we arrived 
for our first child to be born. There's no <laughs> way Jenny like, didn't bring food with her. <laughs> we had like three bags of groceries <laughs> and they looked at us like they looked at us like so weird. Mm-hmm. Like these people, who are these people? Where did they come from? What are they? Th- are they going to work in the food service and make their own food? Like- this lady's got a hot plate. I um, I remember asking you one time, Jenny, what do you do on road trips? And you were like, I bring food. And I was like, oh, OK. I'm like, you don't stop at a gas station ever and get a Milky Way bar. And she was like, uh, no, <laughs> no sorry. I don't do that. So listen, I am not the picture of health, right? Obviously, I'm, I've been on a, a, a lifelong a bad path somebody put me on, and, and my bodies crave things and move me in directions, et cetera. But I'm doing much better now with literally just because of a GLP-1 medication. There's no other reason. I mean, I wanted to, and I, I searched it out and everything. But even now, I found myself, Jenny and I spoke together recently at an event in Texas, and I was at the airport, and I was hungry. And I stood at that thing at that airport and I thought, there's no food here. That's what I kept thinking. I can't even get a drink if it's not a bottle of water. Like, there's nothing here for me to eat. I grabbed a banana and I left. I was like, that is the only real food I see sitting here. Yeah. That was it. In a a giant kiosk where people were just like grabbing things and going in different directions and everything. Or And so I eat reasonably clean now, right? And not on like, it's not the way you think of it. Like, I'm not like. I don't know. It's not, not, I'm not like a bro science guy or something like that. I'm not like drinking amino acids and powders and stuff. Like I'm just, <laughs> I just, I stick to things that I can recognize. The other night, someone said, let's get Chinese food. I couldn't even eat that much of it because I'm on a medication that tells my stomach it's full. Right. Listen, between me and you, it was maybe 45 minutes after I ate the Chinese food where I was like, hey, uh, I got to, excuse me. I got to, excuse me a second. Cause my yeah. body was like, uh, this ain't right. And that that was it. I was, and I, I'm, I don't even want to say sick. I'm, I don't want to be dainty. Like I no, had, just, my let's body eliminate was like, this. get rid of this right now. Fascinating. Yeah. Like absolutely fascinating. So no nutrition. I was eating for sport when I had that Chinese food. Basically, sure. Basically. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. But again, do not tell newly diagnosed they can eat whatever they want and just bolus for it. Nobody should eat whatever they want. Not in today's world of crappy food. And I made a note to this. I said, it's the right message with the wrong wording. Because I do understand telling people, listen, you can eat whatever you want. You just have to cover it with insulin. Not only do I understand that, I've made a podcast about it. Correct. Right. I want people to understand how to use insulin. But that's from a a headier perspective than you think. Doctors say it, I'm guessing, because they want you to use your insulin. I'm guessing they know you're not going to eat well to begin with. That's probably their expectation. Uh, And they probably don't want you to feel limited. I'm guessing those are about the three reasons. The reason I say it is because I think if you know how to use insulin for whatever you're eating, that means you'll know how to use it for other things as well. And hopefully one day you'll figure out the rest of it. But in case you don't, I want you to be able to cover Hamburger Helper because I don't want you to have poor nutrition and poor diabetes management. Right. That's where Absolutely. I come from on that. Yeah, yeah. So No, that's and that's a good a very good clarification I think from the doctor perspective of a new diagnosis. It's one of the I think it's sort of a feel good statement too. I do too. It's Yeah. They don't, you know, they don't want so much to change because they know so much is going to change. Mm-hmm. The fact that you don't have to change what you eat Just make sure you take this medicine along with what you choose to eat. Right. That's the blanket statement is you can eat whatever you want. Well, that's 100% true, as you're saying, but your level is learn to use insulin. So in the case of choosing something like Chinese food or whatever, that you can actually manage the blood sugar, which has the impact on overall health too. My expectation, just to be very clear, is that I don't think most people are going to eat well. That's, I hope they do. I really do. I don't think they're going to. And in that case, I don't want them to be, again, like poorly fueled and poorly like managing their type one. Now, because they have, now they have two different problems instead of one different problem. And now we're just spiraling out of the way. By the way, I don't see any difference between this bit of conversation here about a physician saying, don't worry, you can eat whatever you want. I don't see any difference between that statement and, oh, I've heard there's going to be a cure. I think those are both 
meant very passionately, like, and, and, um, compassionately, excuse me. Yes. But again, you, you run the risk of starting somebody on the wrong path, which is don't worry, eat whatever you want. Well, people who didn't understand nutrition to begin with are like, woo, let's go. You know, right. and, and the same thing when you tell somebody like, oh, you know, I heard there's a cure. These algorithms work so great now you barely have to do anything. What people hear is I don't really have to pay attention to my diabetes. And that's the unintended message. So mm-hmm. find a way to talk to them about food without scaring them about it, putting them on the right path without giving them a, a hall pass to eat whatever they want. Like you got to use right. better words. It's all communication, really. So, right. Yeah. I always think at, you know, at diagnosis, this is, again, especially for kids and teens, I think a, a dietitian should be part of that team education. And in many cases it is, but I think what's left out still is the idea of not only should it possibly be better food than maybe you're already eating, mm-hmm. but also just how much does your kid need? Yeah, Because if they go home with that, even if they are eating the, you know, Doritos or whatever it is, at least they know that the bag isn't the portion, mm. <laughs> right? That I opened it and they were gone and that was it. Yeah. yeah. No, the people right. don't uh, listen. Diabetes taught that to my daughter. She's like, there's 15 in here. I went, nope. <laughs> I know there's 15 in a serving. How many servings are in it? And she's like, oh, yep. yeah. But she was young, but she got to figure it out that way. Again, another mm-hmm. benefit of I can't believe I'm saying this This is another benefit of her getting type one diabetes. Arden's actually a fairly healthy, like fit person. Mm -hmm. So let's go over this last little bit of feedback. And then I'm going to say something at the end. And uh, and then I want to finish with you. This person says, please just find out how people eat before you start their meal plan. Mm. Our doctor had our son snacking five to six times a day, which was not just unsustainable, but we're not snackers to begin with. So this is not a thing we used to do. They were literally telling them like, eat more. And they're like, we don't do that. She also says, he or she says that we're also not junk food people. Mm -hmm. And so like snacking, see what she's saying is you made a snack. We went and got bad food to snack with because you can't cook a meal six times a day, which is the way we usually eat. And she also said, please stop telling people protein is free food and doesn't need insulin. Yeah. Because it's not. I'm going to say this, even though there are probably some incredibly low carb people who think that I am pushing insulin on people because I say, I think you should know how to use insulin. I I am not. And I, I, so I'm going to just ask Jenny here to dispel the, the idea that you need carbohydrates to grow because dispel it. Well, I think you need some carbohydrates, but from the right foods. And I think that some people hear that and think, Oh, Doritos counts. You know what I mean? It's a, it's another one of those mixed muddled messages. Correct. Absolutely. Carbohydrates contain, especially the, the type of carbohydrates that should be being eaten, the vegetables and the fruits that should be being eaten in terms of carbohydrate content, they contain an enormous amount of antioxidants. The colors of the rainbow are a phenomenal piece of the fruits and vegetables. And if you're aiming for lower carb, then you're aiming for the lower glycemic ones. You're not being carb-free. You're just being aware again of how much of it are you eating And you're eating those foods, not from an energy necessity standpoint, because the body can convert in a low carb environment, it can convert to using fat. Mm -hmm. And that's what many low carbers are doing. But you have to also talk with somebody who can really guide you in the right way for that, because you can really do it wrong. Right. And then not be getting any nutrition that way either. Correct. Absolutely. So then when doctors say you need carbs to grow, their concern is, is that if you do keto wrong, you're not going to have the nutrition you need. That would be my expectation and or that they really are just thinking that because the because the human body works very quickly and easily off of carbohydrate, but it's a quick burn. Mm-hmm. It goes in, it goes out, it goes in, it goes out. And so if you have a really, really high carb intake above and beyond what you really honestly need, you're going to be on a constant roller coaster of hunger. Yeah. And your brain is going to work off of carb and it's going to want, 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 right? Whereas if you moderate that, again, understanding what are your nutrition needs, what are your caloric needs, then your body can actually do very well. 
but you have to have balance and yeah. you have to know how to do that balance the right way. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that I don't know how to do it well, but I also wouldn't lie. And I'd say there are days that I'm fairly low carb where mm -hmm. I'll like, I, I mean, I've said on here a million times, like I'll, I'll smoke a couple steaks and slice them up and pick at them for days, you know, or something or something mm -hmm. like that. But I'll still have fruit during the day or, you know, I've, I've come to starting to eat like coconut milk mm -hmm. yogurts and things like that. And I also supplement pretty reasonably. Like I'm covering my supplemental needs if I don't think I'm getting them through food. Again, that's an expense. It's not a thing people know about. I think some people think vitamins are, you know, bullshit. I think some people think they're everything. I don't think they're either. You know what I mean? You still got to eat. You can't just take a vitamin. That would be the Jetsons. Correct. That'd be the opening to the Jetsons, which is another reference <laughs> no one will know. Yes. <laughs> Jenny might be too young oh, for no. that Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. I All love right. the Jetsons. They were, they were great. I used to be jealous because they'd get that pill that would come out of the machine, and then they'd cut it in half with their knife and eat it and then go a month their day. And I thought, oh, I wish eating was like that. <laughs> right. You know what I always find funny about the Jetsons is that they had down what we do all over, especially in the past five years, we've really come into Zoom and all of these online like webcasts and yeah. all of these, the, that was, the Jetsons were like, they were well ahead in terms of our cartoon. It is funny. <laughs> we are today. I did a thing for World Diabetes Day where I spoke to a hundred people for two hours, like from sitting right here. Yeah. Just everybody clicked on a thing and we were all there together and had this nice conversation. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's very cool. But but yeah, supplements. We were talking about yeah, supplements. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, and that that's a, that's another part of this that, that I think people need to be aware of, especially with diabetes, that there are supplements you, you might need. Like, you know, your pancreas is part of your digestive process. Some of you might need like a digestive enzyme or something to help that along. I don't think it's something we're ready to talk about right now, but Jenny and I are looking into another supplement to try to like take to see how it goes. And by the way, I've ordered them. Oh, there's that piece of it. So just even just a, a good multivitamin, but even people go wrong there. They take their multivitamins as gummies or like, you know, it's, Jen, you see Jenny's face. <laughs> she would never take a gummy vitamin. <laughs> gummies are just. Lady the, brought her the, own food to her birth. <laughs> so yeah, like, sorry. You know. <laughs> I know the gummy vitamins are, un, I mean, unfortunately, even from what look like it's a good company. And you can find online very easily multiple reports about gummy vitamins not being consistent in content mm -hmm. of the micronutrients and macro and things that they're that if they it was say possible, they actually the weed contain. would hit people right. So in the gummy, <laughs> gummies, uh, right? Well, I yeah, mean, even even that you know, if you're yeah. gonna if you're gonna take a multivitamin, also look at where where those vitamin sources are coming from. Mm -hmm. Are they actually quality? Are they synthetic? Do they have some type of spray applied to them so yeah. that they're supposed to be absorbed better you know i think i was listening to something recently where someone said that one of the like chewable vitamins has like something in it that at a certain parts per million would be deadly or something like that and i was like what the hell they're more expensive okay but mm -hmm. buying something cheaper that's a waste of your time is a bigger waste of money so i'll say that i stick to pure encapsulations or thorn those are the those are great brands yeah, those yeah. are the two brands i stick to so mm -hmm. For things like vitamin D, uh, zinc, I take uh, an iron supplement from them. I mix mm -hmm. it with a vitamin C from them, that kind of thing, multivitamin, like that that sort of stuff. So if you don't think you're getting it, I, I drink athletic greens. You can probably try to find mm -hmm. a green drink that would, you know, like help you with these things. But if your food's not giving it to you, I know nobody thinks of it this way. But if I followed a random person around all day, I'm going to guess that seven out of the 10 things they put in their mouth are not valuable to them nutritionally. Good. I just think that. I don't know how you could look at that stuff at that airport or in the grocery store and not come to the conclusion. Like the, there's a, uh, the potato chip aisle that is usually also the candy aisle. Literally nothing in there is helping your body stay alive, right? The soda no. aisle. If we're, if we're talking about carbohydrates to get rid of Right. The majority of them live in the aisles of your grocery store. Yeah. They do. Right. hundred percent. And they're fun. I'm not going to lie to you. Nothing better than licking whatever that is off a Dorito. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> Jenny wouldn't know about it, but it's fantastic. And we all know it. Those are those things. There, I mean, right. if you're going to eat those things, try to find a better way. I'm not saying like you should be sitting around growing carrots in your backyard. I know that's probably not reasonable for people. 
But I can tell you this, I can't eat potato chips. They make me nauseous because I don't really, mm. I don't, I don't consume oil. So sure. like I only use either cold pressed olive oil, grass fed butter or coconut oil every mm -hmm. once in a while. Those are the only three things I like I'll cook with or use. So if I have potato chips just out of a bag, I'll get nauseous from it. But if I were to make my own potato chips, which is actually a thing I know how to do, I can, I'm okay. And not only yeah. that, they hit Arden's blood sugar differently than a potato chip out of a bag. Yeah, you'll you'll notice, and a lot of it, I, you know, in terms of oils, I think what you're probably noticing digestively yourself, and what you probably notice in Arden's response, blood sugar wise, is that I mean, the, the seed oils are horrible. Yeah, yeah. If you're talking about canola oil. If you're talking about any of the like sunflower seed oil and the safflower oil and the, all of those that are they are cheap they're fillers and they are what is used in the majority of processed package right let's call it snack food and every restaurant's going to use it because it's cheaper yeah so anytime you go to a restaurant and something's fried it's basically in machine lubricant <laughs> or whatever the hell that ends up being when you melt it down uh, listen i i think if you listen to the podcast long enough you realize that I cut the oil thing out maybe three or four years ago. I've been making small adjustments to myself for years and actually making the podcast has helped me with that. Even watching my daughter's health and like, I think we should get rid of this or that, like that kind of thing. But I was a person, even as a child, if you took me out for pizza, I'd be sick to my stomach. Mm. And, and, and I know if you say that out loud, people would say, oh, that's celiac, right? Oh, that sounds like celiac. I do not have celiac. I don't have a, I don't have a, a gluten sensitivity. I've been tested. They've stuck things in both sides of me to look around. I don't have <laughs> those things. Okay. But as a child, take me out to a pizza joint. You need to get me to a bathroom in about 90 minutes. I, I couldn't live like that. And I had a lot of moments in my life where I was like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Like, like in an emergency situation, I have not gone to the restroom out of an emergent situation in years. Mm-hmm. Years. I have never, uh, that Chinese food the other night, notwithstanding, I have not. And even then I wasn't like, oh dear Lord, I need a bush. Like I was just like, oh, I don't feel good, you know? But yeah, that doesn't happen to me anymore. And so right. it's nothing wrong with my body. It was something wrong with what I was putting in it. Like my body was literally saying to me, this has to get out of here. Right. And this doesn't work. Yeah. This doesn't work in mm -hmm. you. We need it to go now. But you can make your own pizza at home, can't you? Oh yeah. I can eat it forever. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I make my own pizza. I use a little double zero flour. I have it brought in from Italy or wherever they make that. I don't know. You overpay for it a little bit. You buy actual mozzarella cheese, not something that's wrapped in plastic. It looks like it was wrapped up nine years ago. And you open up a, a, an organic tomato paste and you're on your way. Like it's not, it's just not right. hard. And it doesn't even cost anything extra. Like I know right. people are like, oh, it's more expensive. Yeah. I spent 10 extra dollars on the flour and four extra dollars on the pound of cheese. And in return, did not have diarrhea. Seems worth it to me. <laughs> like, right. so, like, you know, like, right. I mean, or, and I didn't feel sick and nauseous and not good for days sometimes afterwards. And I know now this is, it feels like it's devolving into like, like seriously, like something you'd hear online. And it's not, it's just my experience. Right. I've gone through it and I've seen it. And then you're talking to Jenny who didn't go through it and it doesn't experience those, these things. So, yeah, I, I yeah. just, I mean, I, I think the other, you know, piece to think about too is when I think about kids and I think about what goes into their body, they've got a lot of growing to do, right? And you can facilitate healthy growing and healthy movement through all the periods and stages of their life that they're going to get to. And a lot of times I think the easiness of a lot of the processed stuff with the busy life that we have and the fact that you're trying to just have them feel like a kid, like normal, yeah. right? But they've already adapted to either getting injections, having a CGM put on their body, having a pump put on their body. If you tell them they can't have Doritos anymore, they're going to adapt. Right. Yeah. They may be angry for you, you know, at you for an entire week, but you know what? You're the parent. <laughs> also, just you get what you expect, honestly. What I mean by that is that Jenny has two little boys. They're like real classic little boys They're big energy, like, you know, maybe a little crazy, like, right. They got the whole thing going on, Yeah. but I bet you they've never had a Dorito. <laughs> like, 
Okay. They, unless they had them at friend's house that I did not yeah, know yeah, about. Yeah. I have never in, well, I can't say that I've never had a Dorito. I mean, no, obviously in my childhood, teen year, I, I know that I've had Doritos, but, and I'm sorry that I'm picking on Doritos. No, like there no, are so no. many other like yeah. things. And, <laughs> I think what we're saying is that is like that every day when you pack your lunch, is there a grab bag of chips in it? And for no. a lot of people there are. And for you, right. that's not a thing. Like, I'm not saying you've never had a potato chip. I'm certainly not saying that. But I'm saying is your kids eat pretty clean lifestyles and they're nice yeah. little well-adjusted children. They're not like, like, I, I think it's possible people could like be like picturing, you know, <laughs> like a homeschooled child that doesn't look like they've seen the sun. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Oh, not at all. Yeah, not yeah, at yeah. all. In fact, there, it's, what's really funny is right. this year, my fifth grader came home and he's like, mom, this is so funny. And I was like, okay, what? P I made homemade pizza on Saturday evening. It's mm -hmm. our movie and pizza night. Yeah. And then they have leftover pizza for Monday's lunch at school, right? Because there's usually several slices left. And I mean, their pizza is mostly like veggie toppings and I whole make the crust and whatever. But there's a lot of greens on their pizza. So <laughs> my fifth graders like, my friends keep telling me that I eat green pizza. <laughs> like it looks like I've got alien pizza. And I was like, are you okay with that? He's like, yeah, aliens are cool. I can do that. <laughs> he just lets it go. Yeah. Well, that's a <laughs> great, it's go. a great example of like, he's not being, pre look, you said something earlier. I don't disagree with you. You want to be normal. You want to live your life like everyone else. But that in the end is a trade-off. At some point you're deciding to make a trade-off. And, yes. and so today I've had a, a coconut milk yogurt. I've eaten two eggs. And I've had a bowl of chicken soup. This is what I've had today, mm. right? But I guarantee you when I go downstairs, I'm going to have a couple of gummy bears. I saw them when I was coming up here and I was like, I'm definitely <laughs> having a couple of gummy bears later. Like, I'm not some person who's just like, you know, crazy All over down crazy, one yeah. side of it. I'm just saying right. there's, there's obvious things you can avoid that will really help you. And, you know, too many calories, too much processed oil, they are easy things to eliminate. Like, it's a weird thing when you're, first go through your house and like for us it was like well we make our own popcorn what mm -hmm. are we gonna and it was always with canola oil and so i said well we're not gonna use canola oil anymore but you can't make popcorn with olive oil it tastes weird and so like my whole family was like what are we like it was like a bone of contention i spent six months buying different oils and making popcorns until one day i was like i've got the answer it's coconut oil you can make popcorn and it, and tastes, and it tastes good doesn't it, tastes it? Tastes like popcorn Yes, I mm -hmm. figured it out. Was fun? It was not fun. Did I throw away a lot of oil? I might have. Okay, but I figured it out. And I think right. you. I think people could figure it out. Even I swear to you, this little girl came on. She's been on before. Her episode's called "Bugs in Your Belly." Oh, she came on first because she's talking about like gut biome. She was like this like four, twelve year old girl was like, "Oh my gut biome!" I'm like what the hell? Oh my god, and, and that's she, awesome. She's talking about all of it and everything. I've had her back on since then. And she just turned me on to like organic grass fed butter. Mm -hmm. I think I spend $3 more on butter now than I used to. And I want to tell you, it's made a big difference. And I don't know another way to tell you, like it's been, it's made a difference in my life. So, and you don't eat. So you say, you know, it's $3 more, but you're not eating stick after stick every day. Yeah, 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 so yeah. The, co the cost of it actually, it evens out to your favor even though the cost is higher, you're doing something better health-wise and you're not eating so much of it that that $3 really makes that much of a difference. I could make the argument that I am saving in toilet paper what I'm spending in butter and I am not go. trying to be funny. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. You're doing a good thing for yourself. And at the end, listen, if it's three extra dollars a week for butter, let's just say that. OK, let's call it 10. Let's call it one hundred and fifty dollars a year for more butter. Ten years from now, when I'm not dying, I'll think that was worth it. And like, right. I think that's just sometimes the way you got to think about this stuff. Also, I know people can't afford everything and but there's still ways to do little things. Yeah. I say pick pick your battles, right? Mm -hmm. Pick your things that if you look at where what are the 80% of foods that you eat over and over and over again? Where can you start to either decrease processed or decrease the brand? This brand is better, this brand has less ingredients. Where can you start right. to pick some things to introduce better? 
you know, everybody, I mean, things are expensive today. I mean, the price of eggs, when I look at them, man, it's insane. I'm like, wow, really? Yeah. I, I honestly, we've considered like getting chickens because <laughs> <laughs> they're expensive. I gotta but... be honest. It's weird to me. You don't have chickens, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have them. <laughs> we, and we've thought about it for a number of years already. <laughs> um, but, you know, there is, there is a trade-off. The quality of nutrients that go into something that has, yes, a higher price, but again, when you portion things out, you may actually be doing better in many in many ways by spending a little bit more. Again, not on everything. Maybe you pick and choose. Yeah. So that's a great place to stop. Doctors, please put people on these paths. And I just wrote down that you and I should do a small series about how to remove processed foods from your life. Ooh. I think that's a good idea. So, Yay. all right. I know you have to go. So I, I do. Go I'm ahead sorry. and run. I'll talk to you. Awesome. Bye. Thanks. If you're enjoying the grant, if you're enjoying the grand round series, please share it with someone else who you think might also enjoy it. As always, thanks to Jenny for coming on the show. And I'd like to thank AG1 for sponsoring this episode of the Juice Box podcast and remind you that with your first order, you're going to get a free welcome kit, five free travel packs and a year's supply of vitamin D. That's at ag1.com slash juice box. Arden has been getting her diabetes supplies from U.S. Med for three years. You can as well. USmed.com slash juice box or call 888-721-1514. The episode you just heard was professionally edited by Wrong Way Recording. Wrongwayrecording.com. If you're looking for community around type 1 diabetes, check out the Juice Box Podcast private Facebook group, Juice Box Podcast type 1 diabetes, but everybody is welcome. Type 1, type 2, gestational, loved ones, it doesn't matter to me. If you're impacted by diabetes and you're looking for support, comfort, or community, check out Juice Box Podcast, Type 1 Diabetes on Facebook. If you're not already subscribed or following in your favorite audio app, please take the time now to do that. It really helps the show. And get those automatic downloads set up so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juice Box Podcast.